really good people, no matter how long it takes, we always stay together. That was almost 20 years ago. If Africa is blessed today, Benin most specifically, to have an ambassador in his capacity representing that country. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend and brother, Ambassador Francis. Thank you. Recipient of the first Building Bridges Across Boundaries Award, New York, December 16, 2015, United African Congress in Cape Manhattan. to serve the people, to serve humanity. And that's why I wanted to know as much languages as possible when I was young to be able to speak to everybody to the heart. And that's why I followed the steps of my grandfather who worked for Germany in Togo and Cameroon, crossing borders in Africa, coming and going. And then uh, I uh, tried to do things that can make a difference. Mm. To make a difference has been also one of the great purposes of my life. I always try to bring the salt that is missing to get the sorrows as tasty for everybody. I always try to solve the problems by bringing an approach that nobody has imagined. And that is what brought me to New York. Through the five years I have been here as ambassador, I experienced Rio plus 20. I prepared Rio plus 20. In that same year, my president unexpectedly was elected president of the African Union. I had to uh, play under the sea a very critical role in solving the Malian crisis to make the difference Mali is not looking today as Syria. It was because we had the right man at the African Union seat. And he was able to do the right thing. On behalf of this distinguished group of men, <laughs> uh, from the United African Congress, and give them a hand foundation, men we adore, honor, and truly respect uh, to the woman who is representing the man, Ambassador Anatolo uh, Mumba. Uh, so for his distinguished commitment tremendously to the diaspora and to the arts and to building bridges, the first Building Bridges Across Boundaries Award uh, to the Chargé d'Affaires a lovely woman. It's an honor for me to fill in for uh, my ambassador, Mr. Anatolio Lomba, uh, permanent mission of Equatorial Guinea. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here today because um, he is away on a meeting. Um, I'd like to thank Ms. Jude, Dr. Judy Kruinsky for this initiative and honoring my government with this award. Uh, my president, Mr. Um, Teodoro Obian Gimabazo, as a true Pan-Africanist, saw something truly special in the art of um, Mr. Eric Edward, reason why he made this generous donation to the best collection of art. And um, I'd like to assure to Mr. Edward that he has found in Equatorial Guinea a lifelong partnership, and we hope to, to see him to continue to grow and continue to bring awareness and visibility to the African continent through his art. And um, as 
we're approaching the holidays, I'd like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year's. Thank you. Thank you. And number two, and number three. Very nice. Okay. I remember there was one headline in the New York Times which said something like, and I don't remember it word for word, but it amounted to something like, American doctor comes back from Africa with Ebola. And of course, we know how dangerous a headline like that is, because many uninformed people thought the crisis was affecting every African country. So I think it was irresponsible for the New York Times to have a headline like that. And I bring this up because individually, we can all make a difference. All it takes, I guarantee you, I know this, because when I started out in journalism, my first internship was with the Wall Street Journal, and then I was a freelancer of the New York Times. If you pick up the phone and you call and you ask for an editor, they actually make note of it. So next time, that reporter or the headline writer most likely will not repeat the same thing. I think the quarter was there ready to highlight opportunities in Tanzania for investors. The first question they asked the quarter was, oh, so what about Ebola? I think Quinta almost fell out of his chair. <laughs> Quinta said something like, uh, that, that's in West Africa. I mean, yeah, and, and what did Charlie Rose say? He said, but it's only <laughs> a flight away, a plane flight away. And I could see how confused Quinta was. Of course, Ebola was a crisis, but it was not the only thing going on in Africa at that time. So the media played a very critical role. And whenever we can challenge the media, Please let's do so. I don't want to take too much time, but thank you for giving me this opportunity. We thought that the immigrants in the United States, people from Africa, from the Caribbean, Latin America, um, have not had an opportunity to exercise their numbers. And especially with Africans, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of Africans in New York. And they are not even able to, to, to get some of their people elected into, in, into office, uh, very few. And it is time that we begin to flex muscles, the Caribbean and Africa, the diaspora, so to speak, and, and have a voice. <laughs> now I'd like to invite um, Dr. Judy to the podium. She will make a presentation and she will be followed by City. This is to me the perfect environment, being here at the Friars Club, celebrating brotherhood because the group of us here and the group of you who have created here from the United African Congress and Give Them a Hand Foundation have really created a brotherhood that is really beautiful. And with the African Art um, Museum, and all the events that you've done with the uh, forum about Ebola and the concert and the July 10th event that you did and then even here. So there is really a brotherhood. In honor though of what our Chardonnay d'Affaire has just said, this is also a sisterhood. So we shall call it a personhood. <laughs> These are young men and some young women, by the way, who end up uh, coming to, uh, they're, they're taking up this job, volunteering, although they're paid, to take the job of going into the villages to collect uh, the, the bodies of the people who have expired from Ebola. And as I'm sure you're aware of, they were um, very traumatized communities who were having a very hard time letting their loved ones go. Uh, the Ebola crisis was being, and virus was being uh, transmitted because people were continuing with the rituals, the loving rituals. And so the burial team members that I worked with said, our loved ones died because of what? Love. They died because of love. Because they wanted to care for their loved ones. This is part of, fortunately, the African culture, and many of our other cultures, including my own in America, have lost 
that caring. So bless all of you, bless everyone in West Africa, each other, and who are building bridges as those three triumvirate and all of you collected here. The Human Rights uh, Commissioner invites us. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And that's Great. it. Great. Or some people sitting? You're right there. Can you all capture the one? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Gender balance. Okay. Ready? Best possible spot. Anyway, let me just, on behalf of uh, uh, the most distinguished friends and leaders, uh, Dr. Mohammed Nur Hussain, uh, so let's see, Gordon Tapper, uh, they call us the triumvirate. So the three of us, Dr. Judy, said that uh, if we could only carry you, we will put you, we will get a hammock like we do in Africa and then carry it around. But certainly we are absolutely eternally grateful uh, for your generosity of spirit, your friendship, your sisterhood in making this possible. So give Dr. Judy a big round of applause and our sisterhood. And I just been ordered, because this is what district attorneys do, uh, my sister Pat said, <coughs> Judy, uh, Honorable Pat Gatlin just told me right there that the next event she is going to host it. So give her a big round of applause. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, let me be thankful to each and every one of you in this room, uh, from the people who served us, the Friars Club, and. Uh, uh, Dr. Monica Sanchez, she snuck in and, and, and didn't even tell us she was going to be here. And our lawyer, the Shapner, uh, who was down there. So Eric uh, and uh, Mr. Lou, Africans from the continent don't build bridges. Well, if anybody doubted that, just talk to Eric Edwards. Because Equatoria Guinea did what? we always knew was in the heart and minds of Africa by making a generous donation to get the African Center built. So thank you, thank you so much. And uh, I, I cannot thank uh, uh, the people that, that made this possible. Certainly uh, my own leaders, Dr. Mohammed Nur Hussain, give him a big round of applause. And everything you have seen scripted here uh, we have our own in-house ambassador, and uh, he is the consummate professional. We, we say Yaman, the Jamaican, but definitely Excellency Gordon has absolutely been a friend, a partner, and he epitomizes excellence. And everything you see here, he made sure that everything is what it's supposed to be. So give Gordon Tapa a big round of applause. And, and uh, of course, I think they will fire me, UAC will fire me, if I don't officially recognize uh, two of our trustees in this house. Uh, the Chief, Gary Schultz, please stand up, Mr. Trustee. And the Honorable Patricia Gatling, please stand up, one of you, thank you. And all of the people that, that finally admitted in this. The Excellency Ambassador Tete Antonio.